Hello, hello! Are we live? Is everything hunky dory? Is it all working? Is the audio balance okay? We've had a lot of tech issues in the last couple streams, but I'm happy to launch the first debate direct of 2023 with a bang! Not mine. That joke isn't actually mine. Someone else came up with that. But yes, I was thinking for the first debate direct of 2023, I mean, it's episode number. 79 it's just a random number it's not important number wise but i don't think we should let the numbers dictate debate direct in fact i think once we get over a hundred episodes i'm gonna just remove the numbers from the titles of these videos because I, I i think it's cool to see how many we've done and how far we progress with the series as a whole and i will keep the numbers in the thumbnails forever like i want that to be like a little thing just like oh that's how many there have been wow that's crazy but this isn't an episodic series you don't need to watch it in order and I, I want to at least see 100 in the title, like, actually typed in before I get rid of them, because I just think that would be immense. Um, but really, they don't matter, so in future, like, I'm just not going to number debate directs anymore. I don't think it's necessary at all. Um, but yeah, this is the first one of 2023, so I want to do something a bit special with it. And hopefully, this might mark a shift in the actual debating of this series, because to be honest... The whole title and everything doesn't really make perfect sense. It's too late to change it now, but like, 
you know, most of the debate directs aren't actually debating. Usually it's some kind of intellectual back and forth discussion, which could broadly be defined as debating. But we hardly ever do actual proper strict formatted debates on here. And I think today we could actually try and change that. Um, I have recently, in the last few months, been avidly attending debating society at my university, and I've learned a thing or two. Um, and I think I might change how we structure these. Uh, not necessarily adopting what debating society does, which is British parliamentary proposition opposition with the house and everything. Well, I don't think we're going to do go that like strict, but well, you guys will see. Anyways, um, I hope the audio balance is okay because I am not alone today in this nuclear energy debate. We're going to be talking about nuclear energy. Is it good or bad? Should we advocate or avoid using it? Is it worth the risks? Join me, my fellow hydro homie Robbie, as we debate today the value of nuclear energy. He's changed his username a few times, but we all know him as Robbie. It's the one and only, um, the, the, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, you remember this guy? If you don't, well, he's joining voice chat now. Here's today's um, charity shout out, question of the day, all that good stuff. Robbie, I'm finally inviting you up to speak. Um, welcome. You are an out among us. Um. Uh, okay, I'm back. The first debate direct collab of 2023, the much hyped grand reveal of um, one of the Hydro homies, one of the boys from the community. Um, JWL, yeah. you, you weren't you weren't invited. I'm really sorry, but like you can listen in if you want. But I didn't. If you want to be in these, you gotta. I I gotta be stricter about this because I haven't been in the past. It's led to like messy collabs. Like I I did announce this in Mr. Matt's suggestions like a week ago or more. I'm I'm just saying. Um, Today, guys, Robbie's the only one joining us, but honestly, I'm okay with that because we don't need all of these yeah. you know, debates to have loads of people. And I think, actually, I don't think we've ever done a one-to-one -one debate direct. I'm not sure. But, like, it would be interesting to actually just have one person and kind of go in depth on the topic with them. I don't know, because um, it's kind of rare. And uh, you've, what I'm saying, you particularly, you specifically, have frequently um, collabed on debate direct, like, more than most. So I think it's kind of fitting. Anyway, um, let me get your, um, social page up, though. How are you doing today? Um, uh, hang on. I'm, I'm pretty good. I don't know if I, I linked mean, I the right one. I was like 30 minutes earlier for plan, but that's just Yeah, I, uh, the yeah, thing is, I'm doing two streams today, so I want to give us a bit more time. Yeah, okay, good, because, um, well, you've got several game job yeah, pages. Fair. But guys, if you want to know who this is, what he does, basically, FNAF fan games. There's some, some pretty creative stuff on here. Check it out. All right, links in the Very description. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, so before we begin, I mean, anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to say? Uh, let me think. I'm just going to say hi to the people in chat like as well. Bombs. Oh, you like bombs, do you? Oh, hi, it's the bomb. Oh, God. Well, we'll, we'll be getting onto that soon because uh, Mac, I'm Livy, Super Soul, Joe Duvio, welcome, welcome, welcome. There is something that we should probably clear up immediately because for those of you who aren't informed on this subject and don't feel confident debating about it, I've done what I always do with these and I've linked a bunch of articles I just found from a quick Google search down below. Just some really basic information arguments, you know, for and against nuclear energy, uh, which you can read about. And I've also included the UK government's stance on it, which is going to be an interesting thing to dive into later. Um, but what I want to look at right now is it says somewhere on one of these about misconceptions okay let me just find it it's on one of these come on the one of the pages said something about misconceptions but yeah nuclear energy is often mixed up with nuclear weapons and nuclear missiles those are two different things those are two completely separate things obviously there are uh, nukes which are weapons powered by nuclear energy, such as the two that ended World War II. You guys may remember uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Americans, uh, the Manhattan Project. They developed nuclear weapons. They bombed Japan twice, and then they surrendered. That ended World War II, because this was after the Allies had defeated the Nazis in the European continent. But nuclear energy, regardless of I'm nuclear made. weapons, is different. Go on. Yeah. It's just, like, it's funny that you mentioned um, the bombing of Nagasaki as well, because, like, most people just f focus on Hiroshima, and I guess it makes sense since, yeah, you know, I did a little bit of last minute research. That's the first one. And, of yeah. course, I started with 
Hagasaki. Of course, uh, Hiroshima had more casualties, but most people just ignored Nagasaki entirely, which I find kind of odd since it's one of, of two cities that were nuked. Yeah, it's like they like completely ignore because really because everyone focuses on the first ever nuclear you know destination, the first ever well aside from tests I guess, but you know yeah they they were both important. It took two for the Japanese to surrender, um, you know. Pretty much. If they'd only done it once, well. You know, it, that's a whole thing. Um, I gotta say, Robbie, I've been uh, impressed with your history lately. As someone who is literally studying history to a, a higher level now, I'm really getting into that this year because I'm, you know, I took a gap year last year. Like, man, literally we were talking about like ancient Greece class earlier. Who actually knows what they're talking about? I can't remember like, where. Like seriously, was, one yeah. kid in my class thought that um, the Cold War happened between the World Wars for some reason. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Honestly, I think everyone says this about their specialist subject, but I really feel like history um, should there should be a little bit more um, history taught yeah. to everybody. What's the word? Um, I mean, by history default. is an important subject. Yeah, it, I mean, it's history like history is everything. It's everything, and obviously, I mean, you know, look, you're 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 in like you know middle school, high school right now. You're in this awkward phase where. There's so many people with just complete um, gaps in their knowledge here and there. Sadly, there are adults like that too, but, you know, I wouldn't stress over it. Just focus on your learning and your self-improvement. I mean, that's that's a I advice like for life, idiocracy. I guess. Idioc oh, do you know about the movie Idiocracy? You ever seen or heard of that? Because I haven't watched I it, but not. I know about it. Yeah, guys, the term idiocracy, it comes from a movie that was made in, like, the 90s or something about basically this guy who they put in cryogenic sleep. Uh, but basically, it, I can't remember the exact plot, it's a bit complicated, but he basically gets um, left behind in cryogenic sleep for like 500 years, and he wakes up to the human race where the average IQ has dropped so low that this average guy is like the smartest person in the world, and he just goes on these misadventures, it's it's brilliant oh, yeah. and kind, kind of horrifying. Look up Idiocracy, it's a pretty interesting kind of dystopian future. I should watch that uh, later. Yeah, I, I've never seen it, but I, I know of it. Anyway, um... Let's get on with this. So, nuclear energy. Just to yeah. get an outline of what exactly we're talking about. Really, back to basics. This isn't. These aren't like academic sources. All right. I just went and did a, a quick Google search, and we got National Geographic. I think they're pretty legit and reliable. If you don't trust National Geographic, I'm not really sure what to tell you. Um, we don't need to know the science. You don't need to know the the the, the ins and outs of the science. I don't. I'm not a scientist. But essentially, what we're talking about here is nuclear fission, as opposed to fusion. It's the splitting of the atom, rather than atoms being pushed together. Fusion is something that kind of doesn't really exist yet. I mean, that's still like a work in progress. That's like future technology. But fission, fission's been around since like the 40s. So you can read this for yourself. The link is in the description. But just to summarize, um, in the process of nuclear fission, atoms are split to release massive energy inside the nucleus that's like the core of the atom i don't know if you guys remember this the protons and neutrons are in like this heart of the atom that's called the nucleus and then you've got the electrons orbiting um won't get bogged down the science but basically there's a it's, there's a lot itself. of energy you you're probably fresh on this because you're still actively taking science classes i haven't done science in like five six years <laughs> but uh but yeah um literally like so for some reason, throughout all of like um, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, which I'm in right now, like I've heard cells in like science and biology. It's just like why cells so often? I've heard nothing about cells for the past three years. Cells are like the building blocks of life. Like atoms are to matter, I guess. So they just come up everywhere. I guess it's I don't know. It's one of those things. Um, again, my memory of all the science stuff is vague. If you yeah, reminded no me, I could probably remember. But, but yeah. Um, but anyway, so there's a whole process. Oh which, yeah, but by the um, way, I got a job recently because I job? Knew, because I know that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> Seriously? What? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Kidding. I was I'm gonna making say. Fun of the school system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say because that's the news, and it's like, um, you know, oh, I, I don't know how to do my taxes, but I know that the hypotenuse is gotten by multiplying a squared and b squared to equal c squared or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so this is just kind of describing the process, guys. So, over the years, obviously, we've developed uh, nuclear factories like these. You guys might think of, like, the Simpsons, that iconic kind of, like, tower thing. I put it in the thumbnail. If I just look up nuclear energy and go to images, you guys will see the, you know, the big cooling towers with the smoke coming out. So, 
something uh, we should clarify actually is that that's not like carbon dioxide being released. I think it's water vapor because they have they use water as a cooling agent to kind of keep like the uranium, you know, the radioactive material they use to you know do nuclear fission like um, stable. Um, again, the technicality is all here if you want to read about that, but yeah, um, we'll get into it soon. Um, you know, you might know about radioactive material being like this byproduct of nuclear energy. Um, it's a collection of unstable atomic nuclear. We all, that's like toxic, you know, we, you guys know about this. Um, in pop culture, it's, uh, and then obviously there's, there's that, they've written a bit about Chernobyl here, which I think we'll, we'll talk well, yeah, about Well, yeah, how could they not? Yeah, so Let me pull my notes real quick. Yeah, let's just let's just first first immediate instincts without thinking about it too deeply, guys. Is nuclear energy like good or bad? Do you think we should be prioritizing it and using it? Answer to the curiosity. What extent should we prioritize nuclear energy? Is this like the next best thing? Is I it, think um, nuclear energy is it good. Not a good thing. Do you think it's good? Do you think we should? I, I guess think invest it's good. in it more. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's actually really good to be honest. It could work as an alternative to like biofuels and such. To like careful. fossil fuels as well, because that's what we use mostly now. Moving away from it yeah. slowly. Um, interesting. Pips lives near a nuclear yeah, reactor. Run out those eventually. They gave you pamphlets on what to do if it exploded. Wait, what do you do if the nuclear reactor explodes? Like, if you're near Chernobyl, what happens? For those of you who um, Let me check my notes real quick. are a bit lost on this, by the way, we did actually play a game in three random games a while back based on the people who went into Chernobyl to stop a nuclear explosion from destroying Europe they, and Eurasia. They, they, we did actually play a video game called Liquidators. Markiplier has also played it. Um, if you go onto the three random games playlist, somewhere in there you will find my playthrough of Liquidators. It's actually a very scary game. Like this one. Now remember this? Great game. Don't die. Is that seriously what the pamphlet said? I don't think so. But yeah, you guys remember this? The elephant's foot? Don't die? That sounds a bit unprofessional, I'm just saying. Yeah, anyway, so nuclear energy is a bit stigmatized in society because of its association with things like Chernobyl and, you know, look at the Simpsons, the kind of pop culture, you know, how dangerous it is with the toxic radioactive waste. But there are also a lot of benefits to it, and you think that's uh, a good thing. Before we even look at the articles I've got, I just want to know, like, what, what is your main yeah. reasoning um, for advocating for nuclear energy? Why is it a good thing? Um, nuclear energy is good again because like you know it can work as alternative to fuel that we currently use because you know those are going to run out eventually mm -hmm. so i don't really think we should use it for bombs to be fair no well nuclear like, weapons is a whole that, separate that thing like only if we need to i think we should talk about we'll nuclear weapons at the though. end of the stream because that's a separate thing which i think would be quite yeah. interesting because that one that's a bit more difficult i haven't made my mind up on that one but Let's get into this. So I'm just going to go through these articles. They're just a bunch of pros and cons listed, which I want us all to think about. Okay. So, you know, energy stage here. Um, it goes into more depth here. Again, if you guys want to read this for yourself, it's all in the description. I'm just going to skim over them because I've already read through them myself. But the basic pros and cons that they um, list here is that nuclear energy is carbon free electricity. You know, you can get electrical power because they use a turbine to convert it, obviously. Uh, that is completely carbon free. The land footprint is pretty small. You only need a small, relatively small bit of land to create a nuclear power plant as opposed to coal plants and all that kind of thing. The output of power is massive. It's, it's really high compared to anything else. And the energy source is reliable. However, some cons include that uranium is technically non-renewable. There is radioactive waste, which has to be disposed of carefully. The upfront costs are very high. Like it's low maintenance, but starting a nuclear power plant is very expensive. And there's obviously nuclear waste. And malfunctions, as we've seen with Chernobyl, yeah. can be catastrophic. And that's a whole other story. Um, if you guys don't know, basically, in Chernobyl, which is in Russia, uh, in what used to be the USSR, the Soviets, Ukraine, they... Uh, Ukraine, actually. Ukraine. In U sorry, in, I, I stand corrected in Ukraine. Yeah, I'm an idiot. It's... Man, I actually... Uh, let me look this up on a map real quick. Because... Um... Because the USSR was, it was not I Russia, it was, it was multiple Ukraine countries. Too. No, 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 I think you're right. 
Yeah, it was like 15 countries total. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here it is. It's close to Russia, but it's no, it's in Ukraine. It's completely different, guys. It's in Ukraine. You see there? So, anyway, it's actually near uh, Kiev. It's just a bit north, but yeah. The Chernobyl reactor, um, they had a malfunction, and it basically exploded, and it kind of made the area, like, really radioactive for quite a while. It was, like, pretty horrifying, and um, it could have... Actually, it, have it didn't notes on get Chernobyl here. Pans, but you yeah, it's... Do you know what? Why don't you tell us? Because uh, I didn't do any research on this. I haven't had a refresher on Chernobyl in a while. Tell us about it. I did some last-minute research before the um, uh, stream started. Nice. So Chernobyl mainly happened. I spelled happened. Like, I'm a dumbass. Mm. Uh, basically, the main reason it happened actually was because when technicians at the at um at nuclear reactor unit four they they attempted a poorly designed experiment. They had shut down the act and they removed control rods from its core while allowing the reactor to run at seven percent power. Um, yeah, that's kind of dumb. I this kind of I... links to the just the Soviets poor economic planning overall, but yeah, Pips is absolutely right. This is what happens when a nuclear power plant is run by party yes-men who refuse to admit when anything is wrong, because they're so scared that their leaders will execute them for any kind of failure. Yeah, it's it's nuts. But uh, yeah, so Chernobyl exploded and... The uh, Soviet Union was a communist country. Exactly, like they're, yeah. They're typically not that forgiving. And the... Since then, there's been a lot of stigma around using nuclear energy because of the risks associated with it. But if we go a bit more in depth here, this article from energy.gov is, this is actually a US based one, Robbie, so this will be relevant to you. Um, nuclear energy protects air quality by producing massive amounts of carbon free electricity. It powers communities in 28 US states and contributes to many non electric applications, running from the medical field to space exploration. The Office of Nuclear Energy within the US Department of Energy, DOE, focuses its research primarily on maintaining the existing fleet of reactors, developing new advanced reactor technologies, improving the nuclear fuel cycle to increase the sustainability of our energy supply, and strengthen the US economy. So it's a very real thing that is already in practice, in use here. And the arguments that are arguing, arguing for it here is that it's the largest source of clean power. Um, it, you can see the stats here for yourself. It generates just incredible amounts of power. Um, and it produces basically no carbon, unlike fossil fuels. It doesn't produce, like, carbon dioxide. It doesn't contribute to global warming via greenhouse gas emissions and, you know, the climate crisis or anything. Um, the, the amount of, um, carbon emissions that it saves is the equivalent of removing a hundred million cars off the road. Uh, I think that's probably an approximation and maybe wow, exaggerated. I wouldn't take everything this article says at face value, but... There is a difference. Um, it creates jobs, obviously, it's like anything. A lot, it is. It is a lot. Yeah, and it, you know, it's got some statistics here about how it creates jobs, which is you know always good for the economy, and it supports national security. Um, a strong civilian nuclear sector is essential to U.S. national security and energy diplomacy. And mentioning there, you know, emphasizing the peaceful aspect of nuclear energy here and how it, it's used to, uh, well, they're kind of avoiding a. Uh, Avoiding nukes, but the, uh, the 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 challenges, the cons that it focuses on are public awareness. Here it is. This is what I was trying to find earlier. The general public, you know, often views commercial nuclear power as dangerous, unstable. It's falsely associated with nuclear weapons, and it's you know portrayed in pop culture as this really dangerous thing. Um, but safety, well, I mean, it's well, actually yeah, developed immensely. Like, it's still like, so, like it, it. It's really like a fragile thing, though. It's like, like it's. It has to be run properly. No, like they, they, they are very. It's, you have to be quite qualified yeah. to work in one of these places. I think, at least to be in charge. We'll get more into that soon. Um, but yeah, but yeah. you're not having just because uh, people weren't being careful. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, um, it talks here about the uh, fuel transportation storage and disposal. It's just kind of more efficient. Um, the operating costs are high, and building new ones again, it's a big. Um, you know, commitment. They are considered multi-billion dollar infrastructure projects. Um, the high capital costs, the licensing and regulation approvals, coupled with long lead times and construction delays, have also deterred public interest. Like, you know, for stakeholders and investors, like, you know, it's kind of all or nothing. You can't half-ass a nuclear power plant. Um, see, you know, that's, that's kind of like an American, you know, take on it. Um, 
two more articles here. This, we're really getting into the pros and cons now. There's a lot of things here. Um, I've kind of looked at these in the wrong order. We should have done this one first. So this one, again, this goes into detail, and you guys can read this for yourself here, but just basically listing these off, and if you don't understand them, we can look in more detail. The pros include, you know, large amounts of energy, efficient power source. It's not affected by outside conditions. I'm not quite sure if that's... I guess, like, you know, things like wind and water won't bother because it's all, like, sealed inside. Um, but yeah, you know, it doesn't... It's way more sustainable than fossil fuels. It doesn't have the big carbon footprint. Obviously, it creates job. It's inexpensive compared to other power sources in the long term. Obviously, the upfront cost is high. Um, again, greenhouse gas emissions are relatively low, it says. They're not non-existent, but they're relatively low, and they don't actually come from the... Well, actually, I don't know if I'm right about that. Um... Be a less pollution. May important to be maybe important to the energy transition process. Let me just read about a few more of these because I actually don't know about this. I didn't read all of this article. Um, the unit price for nuclear energy is lower. Um, not affected by outside conditions. It doesn't rely on good weather or wind in order to work properly. So you think about like wind turbines and solar power. They rely on good weather to be useful. Nuclear is always producing the same level regardless of the weather. It's not relying on, you know, natural changing conditions. Um, I just want to get more in-depth in this because there were some of them I didn't fully understand. Um, pollution is low. It's not non-existent, but it's low. It's much cleaner energy. What was the thing about um, relatively low levels? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Um... I think fossil fuels, or at least certain chemicals, have to be burned uh, in order to, like, construct uh, nuclear power plants yeah. and to, like, set it up. There are some emissions, but the actual plant itself doesn't emit any greenhouse gases. So that's why it's relatively low. Uh, it's still a huge difference. I mean, the 100, what, million car yeah. statistic. Um... And yeah, the last one I'll look at for now, again, there's a bit of a good explanation here on the actual science of nuclear fusion. A little graph here, very nice. I've, I've read these articles in the wrong order, guys. Should have done this one first, then this one, then this one, and then the, the US Energy Department one last. I'll save the British government for last, but yeah. Um, so the, 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 the core arguments here that I'm getting uh, the benefits are, it is more sustainable than fossil fuels. Uh, obviously, uranium is finite, and it does create waste, but it is more sustainable. It doesn't produce greenhouse gases. The waste it produces is different, and we will get into that. Like, there's minimal carbon emissions. The main byproduct is steam, you know, out of the towers. It's it's water vapor, it's steam. Energy is way more efficient. Yeah. You just get more, you know, power for your buck, That's basically. That's not really causing any problems. Mm-hmm. Um, limited greenhouse emissions. The maintenance costs are low. Again, compared to, like, coal plants, it costs less to keep it running in the long run. But some of the disadvantages, which we haven't really explored yet. Radioactive materials. Okay. Uranium produces highly radioactive materials which are harmful to the environment. They're absolutely devastating if they're not disposed of properly. They can contaminate water, soil, and air, harming all kinds of life and potentially making the environment inhabitable, which we did see with Chernobyl to a limited extent. Um... Especially if there's an accident, like a leak or a complete meltdown, which is very yeah, unlikely. Water can literally uh, kill you. Yeah, yeah, literally, like po poisoning the the the, the water. Like, you know, contaminated water is literally believed to have killed three U.S. presidents. Like I'm Damn. serious, contaminated water is believed to have killed three presidents. I mean, that's not even specifically with nuclear waste like, either. I mean, office. that's just in general. Actually, yeah. no, not in office for one of them, but that's crazy. I love, like, trivia about the U.S. presidents. I just think that's such a fun part of history. I really should know more about that. That's that's interesting. Were they... Was there any, um... Those three presidents, yeah. were they all from, like, different times? Or were they, like, close together chronologically? Um, it, it was, like, a somewhat similar time. The first one that we think died from contaminated water was William Henry Harrison. He was very old, though. He was, like, 68. He yeah. died like a month into serving his term as president. And is this like 100, 200 years ago? I'm not entirely sure. It happened like 200 years ago. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it yeah. was a while ago. He was the ninth president at the time. Then wow. there was James Polk. He was the 11th president. He nearly died in office from cholera, which is like contaminated water. So we know he did die from that, but it was like four months after he left office. 
And there's Zachary Taylor, who we also think probably died in office from contaminated water, but we're still not entirely sure about that one. We literally poisoned instead, but there was no arsenic found, so we're not entirely hmm. sure, but we do think it was a contaminated water, so it is definitely very lethal. You need okay. like clean water, man. Stay hydrated. I mean, th this was before, like, plumbing had developed to be you know what it is now I, yeah. i'm guessing in that country like if we're talking 200 years ago because like i remember <laughs> in in uh in britland <laughs> we um we literally didn't britland. have a proper britland. sewage system until the thames was so full of human feces that like it created this massive stench in london like it took that much for politicians to finally okay, make a decision UAE and start building plumbing yeah <laughs> So, I imagine similar situations happened have, in a lot of Western countries. Trucks. Yeah, literally, like, it, the, there was no proper, you know, sewage, like, waste management until, like, I want to say, like, the early, mid-19th century, maybe late 18th, I don't remember exactly. Um, it, was still, it was somewhat recent, yeah. Anyway, but back on track, we're getting, we're getting really sidetracked here, but um, safety risks associated with nuclear energy, severe risk to human health, it's talking radiation, long-term health effects, increased risk of developing a wide range of cancers, you know, uh, vomiting and nausea, death, you know, human exposure to radiation is lethal, that's why we see in these pictures, you know, people working, they have to wear like these hazmat suits with like masks that filter the air and everything so that they don't touch any of the radiation because they're hazardous materials that's why you know this symbol that i put in the thumbnail that everyone associates with radio that, that everyone associates with nuclear energy it's literally the chemical symbol of of radiation it's it's a warning that they put on certain chemicals like it makes sense um, to me like, yeah yeah it's so yeah it, it, it is risky in, in that way there's also nuclear bombs which we're going to talk about later that's a whole separate thing um and then the upfront costs the ongoing maintenance is inexpensive, but building a nuclear reactor in the first place is a large capital investment. Um, you know. And the reason why... Again, like, it's been successful. Nuclear energy's been successful in some places, such as the States. Because the security and the, like, um, you know, management of the resources is very, very careful. Like, they're very secure buildings. They, they take it seriously. Um, yeah. And the, the conclusion we that, that this seriously in the US. writer, by Lisa Marlin, Lisa Marlin's conclusion on the matter. Oh, hold on. There's a few paragraphs down. They just kind of got like a few different like questions and answers here. Saying like, is it renewable? Um, sorry, I just want to read this. Um, Again, solar wind and hydro energy are truly unlimited. Nuclear isn't. There is a finite amount of uranium that can be used. It's not technically renewable. Um, but it's possible that scientists will develop a technology that will allow us to recycle nuclear fuel. But it would take a very long time. So it could be re it could be renewable. That's kind of up in the air right now. Um, nuclear power plants create a fraction of the pollution waste generated by fossil fuel run facilities. Uh, coal, coal power plants produce pollutants such as toxic carbon monoxide, mercury, and lead, as well as causing acid and rain. We've talked about this before. One of the charities on my list, actually, I think it's the, um, oh, I'm trying to remember. It, it, I think it's Pure Earth Blacksmith. They specifically mention that mercury and lead poisoning in children in, like, Southeast Asia is a serious problem. That's what they're working to, like, you know, prevent. Um, but yeah, it's very much, you know, more sustainable than fossil fuels, you've already heard this argument. It's an alternative that doesn't produce anywhere near as many greenhouse gases, but the radioactive waste is a separate contaminant that needs to be handled and dealt with properly. I think the way they usually dispose of it is literally to bury it. I'm not entirely sure, which isn't great, but it's the best option. It's like a, I, they have I like landfills for this. I, I only just thought about that now. How do they get rid of it? Look it up. I, I will research that in a minute. Um, to me, that, but, it just yeah. sounds like the easiest thing to do it to me to burn it, but I feel like that would cause an explosion. <laughs> no, no, they don't burn it. They don't do that. Um, the pros and cons that are summed up here is that the energy is the benefits that it put it ahead of fossil fuels. It's highly efficient, low maintenance, comparatively clean, and generates negligible greenhouse gases. The drawbacks that we shouldn't overlook are the environmental and safety risks associated with nuclear fuel and its waste, and the excessive amounts of water needed for nuclear efficiency. And there's also the economic stuff about costs. Um, 
And yeah, the, the emphasis here is that it comes Mercury down to responsible planet, management. Pets. Sorry, you found the answer to your question. Um, ah, hmm. yeah. the more you know. The more you know. But anyway, so we've looked at all of these articles now. Uh, at least, you know, glossed over them. And I think some, like, pretty obvious arguments are becoming clear here. But if you guys got any arguments that no one's come up with yet, no one's mentioned, feel free to bring it up. I'd be very interested to know what you might have uh, heard of. I just need to ask, uh, how is nuclear waste disposed of? Because I think this is the most important thing, right? Okay, so it doesn't generate greenhouse gases, but how right. serious is radioactive waste? Is this enough to warrant, you know, maybe just not going the nuclear route, or can it be dealt with, you know, responsibly? How, how is this done? So this is, I'm just looking it up now. Apparently the amount of waste generated isn't that much, relatively speaking. Perceived health risks? Nuclear waste has never caused harm to people. In the first place, That's a lie. So. Nuclear waste has never caused harm to people. That's just a straight up lie. I think this article is trying to defend uh, yeah, that, nuclear that, that, power. That's a lie. No, it's the, it's the radiation itself that causes harm. Like, I literally I suppose, have notes on like, effects of yeah. radiation here. But like, no, it's, it's okay, like, yeah, that's such a technicality. Yeah. Among radiation survivors. And after a decade, people began suffering various kinds of cancers. Their DNA mm. could be damaged. You could get these things called um, acuration syndrome, ARS, or cutaneous radiation injuries, CRI. Like, it, that's all from radiation, not nuclear waste. Yeah, but the radiation comes from the nuclear waste, doesn't it? Maybe I should... But it's uh, not the waste itself. I guess. At least I don't think. Hold on, I'm just, I'm just reading this. I don't know, I don't trust that. They've, they've linked something else, so I'm going to look at that. But radiation and health. Hang on. Uh, nuclear waste radiation. Let me, because this, this might be a complete misconception. This is what we're doing, guys. We're educating ourselves right now. I know they're not vetted sources. Okay, it's a Guardian article. How bad could it be? Wait, is this even... Probably, probably really bad. <laughs> I mean, this guy... Um... I'm trying to find the... Ah, oh, this, this isn't relevant. Pips, you're a stinky boy. What? Ooh, there's another gov... You DK gov page. Now? Read about that later. Stinky boy, that's bad. Oh, guys, look, it's BBC Bite Size. Man, I used to use this all the time. This is great. Um, you use it now? <laughs> not anymore. This is really intended for, uh, well, for, like, younger kids. Probably people your age and below, if I'm being honest. When you when you get to um, the Probably. level of education, you know, beyond... When you get to your teen years, you stop using this and you start using more professional resources. Like, it's great for kids, but it's not really... It doesn't go that in-depth. Yeah. I, I think BBC Bite Size, it's like Wikipedia. It's where you start. It's a good place, but... Uh, it depends on what exactly Teachers, you're researching. Teachers, when, when they find out you're using Wikipedia. Right? Yeah, no, you got to be big-brained and find the sources that Wikipedia uses and then cite those instead. That's that's how you're supposed to use it if you're uh, super academic, yeah. apparently. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different kinds of nuclear waste in categories here. And it says, so there's like low, intermediate, and high level. And just contaminated equipment, materials, and protective clothing are disposed of in drums surrounded by concrete and in clay-lined landfill sites. Intermediate level stuff like, you know, radioactive sources used in medicine or research components from nuclear reactors are mixed with concrete and put in a stainless steel drum in a purpose-built store. So they usually just, like, dump them away in, like, concrete. And uh, <laughs> nuclear fuel and chemicals from reprocessing are stored underwater in large pools for 20 years, then placed in storage casts in purpose-built underground stores where air can circulate to remove the heat produced. High-level waste decays into intermediate-level waste over many thousands of years. So they basically just bury it. I mean, Chernobyl is still radioactive to this day. If I like, it's it, they just kind of had to abandon it. Yeah, it's um, still active to this day. Yeah, it's it's like one yeah, of the most it, radioactive. There's things no way in the you world. really get rid of the radiation. It's kind of always going to be there. 
Exactly. It's going to be there for thousands of years because it's the amount of radio radiation coming you know, from the toxic waste. Like, the, there's a reason why Hiroshima and Nagasaki aren't radioactive anymore. It's just because, like, like Chernobyl and, you know, that you know, is that in Japan, they just were under d different circumstances. Yeah, it's... That's why um, they have basically regular radiation now. It's like, to, to do, like, the concentration, it's hard to explain. But, yeah, the bombs weren't designed to yeah. keep the place like, super the, radioactive for millennia, obviously. Um, like, when you have so much nuclear energy in one place, like in Chernobyl, and if it explodes, and yeah, that, that, radiation, that radiation is staying there. You're not getting rid of it. Mm. Or at least not for a while, unless we get the proper technologies. Low-level waste can often be compacted or incinerated um, before being buried in a landfill. Um, yeah, basically, radioactive stuff, people just bury it because, like, there's nowhere else to really put it. Because if it's, like, enclosed in rock... That makes sense, And it's not, honest. like, touching, like, you know, plant roots or, like, you know, water, like, groundwater or anything, then it's it's safe. It's been done. But obviously, there have been some uh, mistakes made with that as well. Close it's, calls. Yeah, and also, if we were to move to radioactive, um, to, to nuclear energy more, there's going to be a lot more waste that's going to have to be disposed of carefully. All it would take is, like, one sloppy company dumping a load in the ocean, and, like, you know, that would screw over a lot of people. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of categorized into levels of waste, and they all basically get buried at some point, although some things are incinerated. It's, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, it's talking about the negative aspects here, you know, when there is radiation exposure from, you know, nuclear waste, um, you know, it causes cancer and all kinds of other, you know, horrid conditions, you know, the animals yeah. as well, the wildlife in like, that area, it's talking about here. Um, And then it's talking about, again, disposal methods, incineration, storage, shallow burial, deep burial, in water, um, in, like, pools, not in, like, the ocean, but, like, in, in specific water. pools. Recycling the oh. ocean. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, that doesn't sound very safe. Yeah, I, no, hold on, it actually does list the ocean at the bottom here. A very small amount of liquid waste that is common when waste is Wait, reprocessed what? to extract usable elements is released into the ocean. This process is highly controlled, and radiation levels are deemed to be so low that they are inconsequential. However, recent agreements between companies that rely on nuclear materials have phased out this procedure. So they used to dump this stuff in the ocean in a you know, limited, controlled way, but they've just completely abandoned it since. So because the it... swimming around nowadays thinking like, yeah. like they're just swimming around thinking like. Hmm. Why do I have 10 more flippers than I did yesterday? <laughs> right? I mean, to be fair, there is a thing called, um, what's it, like, microwave background radiation I mean, in, like, space? I feel like the attention is very exaggeration, though. Yeah, like, radiation is all around yeah. us, everywhere, all the time, just to very low levels. It's just, like, yeah, high concentrations always. of radiation that are dangerous, because they, they chemically react with you in a way that, like, you know, fucks you up basically i'm not a scientist don't quote me on that i don't know yeah. exactly how it works but it's it's higher concentrations which I'm are obviously present i'm a scientist i'm a dumbass uh, <laughs> yeah same um <laughs> so relatable but um <laughs> but yeah you know we both we, we have these um how do you call it you know highly radioactive materials it, this is different because they uh do they, I don't, do they occur in nature? I don't know if they, they actually occur in nature or if they, they have to be manufactured. But yeah, it's, um... They incinerate just stuff that's been contaminated, like clothing and equipment. But yeah, storage and burial is what they do with highly sense. radioactive stuff. And, like, it, they do it with stuff that's non-permeable, like clay. So, like, it can't, like, leak through or, like, connect with water or anything, like, specifically. So they use, like, mines. Um... You know. And, uh, yeah, that's, I don't know, that's all I'm getting from this. I, I, I have one question, so, where does radiation come from in nuclear power plants? I, I like, I need clarification. Is it not from the waste? Because I thought it was. I actually don't really know. Like, I've ever seen just, like, like, some pumping thingies, I guess. Like, that's mm. how I just remember seeing it in a video once. Like, I'm just like, how does that make nuclear energy? Does it, like something yeah it says, on, that word. <laughs> it says on bite size nuclear waste remains radioactive and is hazardous to health for thousands of years so i think i think it is 
the nuclear waste. It's not the nuclear waste itself isn't harmful, but it emits enough radiation to be harmful. Like people say, oh, but the nuclear waste hasn't hurt anybody. It's just a technicality to make it sound better than it actually is. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm getting. Again, I'm trying to, you know, research a variety of sources here, guys. Even if they're not academic sources, if lots of different sources are saying the same thing, it's probably true. It's more likely, anyway. And Bite Size is vetted. Bite Size yeah. is legit. I know this. They are like, you know... I mean, it's the, they're a low-level academic Did you use it in high school when you were cramming for your exam? Not in high school so much, but in middle school, absolutely. Like, to probably the level of, like... Maybe at the highest, like, ninth or 10th grade. So, like, def definitely in, like, grade, like, 5 ah. to 8 in your country. It's only, like, a year different. Like, around that. Um, and, it, you know, I think, if anything, teaching younger kids um, stuff accurately is very m even more important. Because, like, they won't question as much stuff. So, I, I think Bite Size is reliable. I, I, would I trust Bite Size. I'm not saying they're perfect, but I trust them to be right. Yeah, yeah that um, makes sense to me. Whereas, you know, EPA.gov, this is just a random... To be honest, I didn't know that bite is. size was a thing. <laughs> oh, well, fair enough. It, it's a English, British thing, I guess. Different countries, you know, we all use different stuff. You probably have some equivalent, but yeah. Like, this is the United States Environmental Protection yeah, Agency. So, they're probably... Um, probably going to be accurate. Because when it comes to, like, agencies that are, like, pro-environment, they're usually more honest than, you know, agencies with an interest economically in, you know, like, a, a, a company that owns nuclear power plants is obviously going to be pro-nuclear, but, uh, that doesn't mean they're wrong, it just means they might emphasize certain things more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm yeah, trying to understand- Emphasis is pretty common in things, like, I emphasize things myself. Again, radiation is basically a side effect of the energy production. If you want to know the exact science, guys, just go back to the the um, National Geographic thing I linked, because it, it does explain it pretty well somewhere. Where is it? I want to actually read the science again, because I didn't take the time to do that. Mm. Like it says here. So they use uranium... I don't know how they get that, but yeah, they get uranium pellets, they split the atoms with like a reaction, it's it's hard, to, I don't know how to explain it, but it creates heat and then obviously that warms the reactor's cooling agent, which is usually water, they bounce out the heat there so it doesn't explode, it produces steam, and then they have these turbines that are powered by the flowing current that creates electricity, which is the, the same kind of like thing, you know, you know how like hydropower yeah. can be converted into electricity? It's the same principle, it's just a different source. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. It makes sense. It doesn't say exactly here, but one of the, one of the articles had like a, a graph. It had like a... Was it this one? No, hold on. Uh, was it this one? Yeah, here it is, here it is, it had this thing. Because I think understanding the science is very important. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a pro-intellectual. I think we should always trust the experts. I think that's something uh, important in, in, in running. You're actually in, an intellectual? <laughs> an actual intellectual? I wish. <laughs> but yeah, the heat turns water into steam, which turns turbines and produces electricity. It's just like transfer of energy. The guys would have all learned this in science class, I'm sure. Um, at some point, probably. This is how that happens. Though I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't specialize in science. It doesn't matter quite as much to me personally. I don't like See, science. Th <laughs> uh, I found it. Cancer.gov. The National Cancer Institute of the United States. This goes in depth with the science of explaining how ionizing you, uh, radiation... Exposes to specific like chemicals and you know gives you cancer. This is like getting really specific about radioactive yeah. isotopes. This is yeah, this is like really specific. This is like the proper stuff. So the process, uh, yeah, I don't think the radiation comes directly from the waste. I think it's just that the that the, they're they're a side effect of the the process overall. 
but this is getting yeah. a bit a bit Very much for me. Free. Like this is this is I, I I this is a bit incomprehensible for me. It's just so much science. Anyway, I think we've spent quite enough time as we always do in these debates. Start off by just reading. Brain? learning, teaching, because the thing is, I could ask you all to come prepared, do your homework, but I don't want to treat this like an assignment. This isn't school, okay? This is a Mr. Matt live stream. So, having this experience of us learning together, I really like this. And I've been thinking about these proper it's debates. Meme. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of different types of debate structures, and the thing we do in debating society, my uni that I've been starting to go to, you know, for the last few months, has been... There's a, basically a host called The House, and they have a statement. They're like, the house believes that nuclear energy is a uh, good, um, is a social good, and that we should use it, or whatever. And then you have the proposition who agrees and argues for this statement, and then you have the opposition who disagrees and argues against it. And it basically is like a binary argument, and it simplifies it down to two sides. You have to pick a side and argue for one. And there's a lot of plain devil's advocates. Great. But um, the, uh, the thing is... Um, uh, with these debates, especially given the number of people here is less and the whole live stream format and the fact that I, I don't assume you will to be academics at university who are all like going to do research and be informed on this. I think I, I'd like to stick to this formula of kind of spending the first part researching and learning with you guys and then just kind of openly discussing it after. But we could we could go like one side or the other. I think what I might do is just prompt you guys with questions if we need... Uh, more discussion. But yeah, I'm gonna... That's Input. all for the, uh, the articles now. So I'm gonna catch up with chat. Um, and Robbie, if you wanted to start, like, forming a conclusion on what your stance on this is, you personally, you individually, because I think that's, I don't know, I think that's more interesting with fewer people than just trying to argue blindly for one okay. side or the other. I can do that. So what do you think? I'm gonna catch up with chat. Okay, so I... My stance remains the same. I think nuclear energy is a very good thing, actually. Mm. As long as we don't repeat Chernobyl and actually get qualified people on the job, then nuclear energy could quite literally... It, that's a pretty short version of it, but it pretty much sums up oh, all you, my thoughts on the matter. You, you cut out, unfortunately, on Mike Alpherson. You said nuclear energy could pretty much... Be the future. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, I'm just reading the UK Gov thing as well. Um, oh, this is just a bunch of links. I don't know where to go here. But, I mean, we've already read about how various governments and organizations do it. Um, RWM? Radioactive Waste Management? <laughs> I'm just trying to find out here how exactly they do this. They've made a short film about this. I'm gonna mute this in case the uh, it's like copyrighted. Are there any captions on this? I'm just curious no. what this is, how it works. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. The only thing I we need to read now is like this thing, which we'll get to. So, just catch up with chat. Um, just to see what people think now. I'm gonna, I don't like this song, I'm gonna skip it. No, it's always the end, whatever. Um, so, yeah, Supercell says that nuclear takes little space compared to a lot of energy other energy sources. Like, solar and wind take up a lot of space. You know, like, how wind turbines with the big fans, you have to, like, space them out, and they have to take up, like, miles of, like, ground. Um, I'm gonna take a fat yeah, rip out of the I nuclear vape tower. Bro. Um, Mercury Bro, is my count favorite me plan. in. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, puff, puff. Have some of that nuclear vapor. Mmm. I love some uranium in my lungs in the morning. It sounds like my organs are just integrating. Yeah, no, it is, it is just steam from water because that's the water cooling, not the not the actual reaction. They don't let the uranium up into the air. Um, man, being a giga chad, just rejecting all the site cookies. Yeah, I always do that. Oh, this is my personal computer. I don't want, I don't want to sell all my cookies. I use Brave with Ecosia for a reason, guys. Uh, Mac, don't worry, I'm not exposing my university. Living Many universities like, have a debate you remember society. Remember some sites, dude. Uh, no, go on. Tell Sean, me. the science dude. Sean, the science dude. I don't remember that. I know Bill Nye, the science guy. But I don't know about Sean. Sean, the, the science dude. Bruh. Also, DJ, welcome. Science. Interesting topic to debate. Nice. 
I see Livy's message now. I don't- Guy Free Science Lessons. I don't remember that. <laughs> but yeah, no, don't worry. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me revealing my uni name. Even if I revealed my uni, people- It would be like doxing myself, but like it's close to where I live, relatively speaking. So yeah, I'd probably rather not. You'd I get mean, shot if you tried to enter the campus to kill somebody. <laughs> if, well, yeah. I, I would I would stay strapped and you'd get clapped. I'd bring my Especially pistol to US. campus. <laughs> Yeah, no, we, it's not the US. We, we, we uh, you know, instead. Second Amendment, I get right. my stabbing license and I, there I shank anyone. There are people. Came looking for me. There, there, there are. are it's in nuts. The US. I'm not joking. That's, that's kind of insane, honestly. Like, that's that's a whole other thing, uh, though. We're like, not here to debate that. Uh, debate direct number 80? Maybe. Guys, I want to do more of these social debates. <laughs> I have a bunch of topics that have been inspired by the debating society at my uni. So I've got some great topics we could talk about. Um, which I think would be really interesting. Are you British? Um, British. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, before, before we look at the UK government, I'm going to end with the UK government's um, like article on this. I just want to, like, close this out now. We've, we've heard, like, all the arguments. We've heard a lot of the information. We're pretty informed now. Chat, answer the QOTD. To what extent should we prioritize nuclear energy? Like, how much should we prioritize nuclear energy? Should we just completely ignore it? Is it a bad thing? Is it really good? Should it be our number one, like, energy source or something in between? <sighs> Go think about the economic factors, the environmental factors, the safety risks, the, um, the energy efficiency, the everything. Any other arguments that we haven't thought we of yet? waste. Yeah, that's how we get rid of the waste. Stop putting it in our food. <laughs> Very efficient, guys. Trust me, if we cull the population, guys, you know, if you're we'll waffle. solve overpopulation and world hunger. If we just start eating each- eat, if, guys, if we just eat the rich, um, no more famine, um, better equality, literally. um, you know, what's not to like? <laughs> wait, literally, or- ver wait, 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 like, as in, like, um, uh, well, what's the word? Uh, Fuck, I forgot the word. <laughs> Morals and ethics, guys, out the window. They're, they're subjective anyway. Don't worry about those. Yes. Don't <laughs> right, explode. Right, beans. But, but seriously, because the way I see it, okay, in regards to the economic factors, our high upfront costs, low maintenance costs, the wrong run, that kind of balances out. I think any strong, any decent economy could afford nuclear power plants as long as they you know, manage it properly. And you know, safety is obviously paramount. But, you know, they want it's your obviously, beans. yeah. It's 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 obviously cleaner energy, right? Because there's basically no carbon footprint. It's so yeah. it's more so more yeah, efficient yeah. than fossil fuels anyway. And I think economically, um, if it you know is used more, um, demand and supply they'll change and stuff, and it might become more expensive because uh, people who run the economy are awful and uh, ensuring that the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. <laughs> um, I'm I'm being facetious, but you know how these things go. Um, it's probably poor, only so cheap now because it's underrated. Like me. Yes, clearly. Clearly that is the narrative that we're going to spin. It's all just because of a skill issue. Uh, Money. Not inherent um, disparities they in the system. Yeah. But uh, all jokes aside, um, oh, aside, boring. ignoring the economic stuff, because I think that can work out either way. I think the biggest drawback is the environmental risk. Like, it's, you know... Clean energy, and, yeah. you know, it's more efficient. There's so many pros. Nuclear energy is looking optimal. But there's always that small risk of something like a meltdown, right? But even more critically, radiation yeah. from the process, the nuclear waste, the whole disposal process. That could very easily not be managed properly and cause serious environmental problems that could, you know, absolutely to decimate the yeah. environment and the ecological like you know you could destroy entire habitats entire communities humans animals flora fauna everything if you didn't manage your waste properly you know um it's that it, you know it's it might yeah, not it be, be perfect really but you know successful nuclear power plants have run in multiple countries i think we have some in the uk even i'm not let's, let me look this up like actually just um world map of Power, uh, of nuclear power plants like they definitely have a bunch in Europe again because of like technology and the economies and stuff I think it's primarily in the northern hemisphere where we've got nuclear power plants here I found on Wano global leadership in nuclear safety yeah. 
every one of these dots is a nuclear power plant. So, there are a bunch, again, as you can see, primarily oh, wow. in the US and Europe, but there's a few in um, the Middle East, South Asia, there's a lot around here, China Israel and South Korea have their shit. Is uh, well, not in the sense of nuclear weapons, but yes, Iran, um, South Africa has one. Um, if I just like click these, I can get a bit of you know information about them. Actually, they South Africa denuclearized. I'm pretty sure it's like a defunct plant, maybe. Yeah, it might be out of date. To be fair, I mean, can we find Chernobyl on here? That one's okay. not exactly functional anymore. Can I? It's control zoom, right? Here's Ukraine, South Ukraine. Yeah, Chernobyl's not listed on here because Chernobyl is north of Kiev. It's up here. So, yeah, obviously that one's not around. But there's still a lot Dead. in what used to be the USSR. You can see, you know, near Belarus, uh, Finland, even like Scandinavia has a few. So, yeah, there are plenty of operational nuclear power plants running all around the world. Um, you can filter by reactor type, and that's a bit technical. I don't know what that means, but like. I think the, uh, <clears throat> the, the the biggest issue to me would seem to be the disposal of nuclear waste. I think I'm pretty much pro-nuclear energy as long as the waste is disposal properly. Because it's just a different kind of waste. Yeah, sure, too. it's not causing, you know, yeah. it's not greenhouse gases, but it can cause serious environmental problems if it's not done properly and... Uh, I mean, personally, I don't trust my government to do anything competently, so I'm not sure. But it's still better than fracking. I mean, God, the the fracking, um, you know, initiative in this country is absolutely just disgusting. Better than uh, fossil fuels. The what? <laughs> Look up fracking. A long story. It's basically like mining for gases. Yeah, fracking. <laughs> It, it, it's it's like even worse than fossil fuels in terms of gas? like who does that issues. you can just go to your ass for that dude come on i'm trying to do a serious debate here <sighs> <laughs> oh such low-hanging fruit it's always the jokes with you i tell you what though this has actually been quite pleasant just doing a, a, a like a bit of a kind of research activity i guess i might start doing this more rather than debating could just be like researching a topic with like one person. I don't know. I think this is quite good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This is, yeah, this is nuclear power plants. Again, you can see it's got roughly the same spread. Even that one in South Africa, Coburg 1-2, it is operational. Um, and yeah, I don't know. The thing is, guys, ideally, right, we would transition to like the cleanest, most perfect form of energy, which would be nuclear fusion or something like that. But it's not possible right now. It's not feasible. Even things like, you know, with solar and wind, yeah. we don't have the infrastructure to deploy them en masse and just immediately replace everything. There needs to be time for a transition in energy that is more sustainable. So maybe nuclear could be the primary in the transition process, even if we don't think it's perfect for the long run. Because nuclear energy, it's better than fossil fuels for sure. Yeah, and see, we need to find uranium. That's the thing. With the amount of energy it produces, it would make moving on to the next thing, you know, solar and wind, easier to do. Um, because energy wouldn't be quite as much of a problem. There could be inflation in the economy that could cause problems with that. I can imagine that happening because businesses would need a way to, you know, keep their real value. And, you know, we already have serious inflation problems in the UK here. It's happening in a couple countries. I'm not sure. It's just... The economy's always shit, though. That's the thing I've learned. The economy seems to always be, uh, you know, doing terribly. But yeah, I think I'm going to finish here with looking at the the UK at government it's not nuclear the Great energy. Depression. I mean, yeah, true. You know, it has been worse. It has been worse statistically. But yeah, there are there are 32 countries in which nuclear power plants operate across the world. They generate about a tenth of the world's energy, which is massive already. But only France, Slovakia, Ukraine, and Belgium use them as a source for the majority of the country's electricity supply as of 2021. Like, in the UK here, you don't really hear about nuclear energy, because we do use it, but only, not primarily, only only a little bit. But France, uh, we have a French in chat, I believe. Um, I don't know if there's anyone from Slovakia, Ukraine, or Belgium watching, but I'd be curious to know how nuclear energy is viewed in your country, if it's maybe less stigmatized, because... Um, is a map of nuclear energy output as a percentage of national power. But France 
He's absolutely leading on this, as well as the other countries listed. They're all a bit small, I don't know where to find them. Slovakia, Ukraine... France is actually using even more than those, because it's a different shade. None of the other countries are that shade of green, but yeah, it's, uh... It's pretty interesting. <coughs> Excuse me, god. Um... But yeah, what, what what do we what do we think, guys? Is 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 all of this worth the risk of the radiation and the the nuclear energy? I mean, I guess there's one other thing I should look up, and that's um, how many nuclear uh, accidents have there been? I'll say since Chernobyl, because that will have been a marked a shift in like safety regarding this. A brief history of nuclear accidents worldwide. Let's see it. Serious nuclear accidents have been few and far between, but their stories will help prevent future catastrophes. Um, there was an earthquake and tsunami that struck Japan in 2011 that caused a nuclear reaction. That's just a natural disaster, creating a knock-on effect, unfortunately. It's got Chernobyl listed here, which was just the worst. Well, yeah, that was out of their control. Mm, that was just poor management. Uh, Three Mile Island, Middletown, Pennsylvania, USA. I completely slaughtered that pronunciation, but... Apparently there was small radioactive releases uh, in a partial meltdown in the U.S. Here's another U.S. one. They're all U.S. ones here. But yeah, there are some accidents of just kind of, you know, mistakes made running it. And, uh, you know, like, environmental accidents. Yeah. In the UK, one of ours caught fire and melted with to large amounts of radioactivity in the surrounding area. Um, more than 2,000, more than 200 cancer deaths are attributed to the disaster, which is considered to be have been the worst to occur in the West. That's still fairly minor compared to something like Chernobyl. That's awful, but like, in terms of scale, it's you know not that huge. Yeah, it's very minor, but still. Oh my God, guys! It's the Union of Concerned Scientists. This is one of the charity shout-outs on our list. That's so cool. Today's charity shout-out, which I've forgotten to do. Well, I'm actually going to do this now before I forget. Today's charity shout-out actually goes to Amnesty International, though. There we I'm just going down the list alphabetically. Amnesty. But yeah, Amnesty guys are campaigning for a world where human rights are enjoyed by all. If you don't know these guys, you should definitely check them out. If there's a charitable cause you want to support today, you could go check out the Union of Concerned Scientists or wait until I talk about them in like 10 streams time. But also, this is a global movement that is fighting against every injustice, uh, you know, that violates the, the Geneva Convention, all that kind of thing. They've been going for decades, they've protected, you know, free speech, you know, um, protection from the death penalty, you can write letters, donate, volunteer, there's a lot of good work you can do. So definitely check them out, link is in the description, as with everything else. And the best answer to the question of the day will win a shout out as well as them. Now, normally I'd take a break now, but I think we could end the stream pretty soon. This isn't as long as I thought it would be, because... I don't know, I think we've boiled down the argument pretty yeah. simply. Um, Mac doesn't have a stance on the QOTD. Yeah, pretty much. I think I'm pro-nuclear. I think I think maybe we should move on to, to nuclear weapons now, because I think we've said everything yeah, there is too. to say here. It's just kind of weighing up, is it worth the risk? Um, you know. Pretty much. I'm just, I'm just trying to look at a few of the... Uh, like, how common are nuclear reactor disasters? Again, other than Chernobyl, I don't know off the top of my head any others. And I think that says a lot about um, how nuclear uh, safety has changed since Chernobyl. I think since then there's been a lot of attention. But I mean, the Three Mile Island in the USA and the one in Japan. The one in Japan was because of a natural disaster. That couldn't be helped. And the USA one was from 1979. It was actually before Chernobyl, which was in 86. Yeah, so, that was out of control. Yeah, like, I've not heard of any major nuclear, you know radiation issues in the UK not even like decades ago so I don't know maybe maybe this is something that we can actually manage safely um it's just that there's always the possibility I mean yeah very much I don't know so yeah I think uh let, I'm just gonna read out the the UK gov article now so it says here that um in light of high global gas prices, we need to ensure Britain's future energy supply is bolstered by reliable, affordable, low-carbon power that's generated in this country. It would sound like a, 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 a British uh, politician now. 
new nuclear energy is not only an important part of our plans to ensure greater energy independence, but to create high quality British jobs and British economic growth. Okay, I'm gonna stop that, but um, you get the idea. The UK government says that nuclear power is safe, as confirmed by the UN's International Atomic Energy Agency. They are among the safest and most secure facilities in the world. Um, the annual radiation dose for an adult living beside a nuclear plant, like Pips used to, is much less than taking one transatlantic flight or eating 100 grams of Brazil nuts, neither of which have heavy radiation. So the radiation is safely contained in most you know, countries in the UN, you know, according to these authorities, at least. Um, you know, we have a well-respected regulatory system. Bear in mind, there is an agenda here. They're trying to argue for themselves, but um, they're not being, uh, they're not lying. Um, but yeah, I think, I think if you just look at the facts, think about, well, what accidents have happened? You know, the most severe one caused 200 cancer-related deaths in one region. Like... Uh, you know, I think it's it's it could be a lot worse. Not perfect, but like a nuclear power, it seems like it's it's being taken care of here. And this is again just an explanation of how exactly it works. It's this a single pellet creates the same amount of energy as 150 gallons of oil. God damn. Nuclear waste disposal. This is what we want to know. GDF, Geological Disposal Facilities, are internationally recognized as the best long-term solution for dealing with radioactive waste. Um, again, their scientists are researching a sustainable solution or potentially recycling nuclear uh, waste, as we mentioned earlier. But right now, um, there isn't really a long-term solution. It's just stored away um, or like buried for safety. It doesn't specify what GDF is here. Which is probably because it doesn't sound that great when they say it. It's literally just buried. Is it just does it does it just strap me and get a GF? <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, the GDF. I mean, they don't always just store it, you know, in non-permeable rock. Sometimes they store it in like facilities. With the GDF, higher activity waste will be put hundreds of meters deep underground. Which is, honestly, I mean, it doesn't affect anything wow. really deep underground. If it's deep, it won't affect, like, you know, life on the surface. And then there's also the benefit of, you know, creating jobs and everything. So, yeah, this is pretty much just propaganda at this yeah. point. Just saying, well, this is what the government is doing, why we're great A bit. in some science. But yeah, it, it is a high cost thing to power up, though, to begin with. Alright, guys. I think that settles it. I don't know about you, but my take is this. Yeah. As long as there is a responsible management of waste disposal, and it's used as part of a bigger movement to move towards more sustainable energy, I think we should invest in uh, nuclear energy. I think the extent to which, to answer the QOTD, I think the extent to which we should prioritize it is whoa. I think we should prioritize it pretty highly because if there's one thing that is absolutely certain we cannot keep going on using fossil fuels coal and oil it's just not gonna work yeah it's transition more quickly it's so it's a finite material it's gonna run mm. out eventually and you know just because we should be moving towards nuclear energy and promoting that doesn't mean that we shouldn't also be trying biofuel you know wind solar again some places are consistent in their weather a lot of hot countries around the equator could generate amazing solar energy, and a lot of the cold, wet, dark places, like, you know, Scotland, could just, you know, absolutely produce massive amounts of, you know, wind turbine energy. And we could, you know, store that, you know, as electricity, as batteries, you know, and trade with each other. You know, this is a, a great way that the, the entire world could be powered more efficiently, is if we specialize and then we trade with each other, because that's just better for the economy. And, you know, if you really want to get political with it, well, there are certain countries Politics. in certain regions of the world, um, which I won't name, but I think you know, which have a bit of a, a, a very, how should I put it, a strong foothold in the global economy because they are sitting on top of all the oil. That can be changed if we start diversifying our energy and stop relying Kuwait. on fossil fuels. Even if you ignore the environmental ecological reasons, even if you ignore, you know, the um you know the local um you know economic reasons 
the global economy would, would benefit, I think, from nuclear energy. And just diversification just in general. I mean, I suppose things like inflation could balance it out, but those there are there are bigger problems to solve there, I think, that aren't specific to this energy form. But yeah, nuclear energy, um, again, it's an investment that's worth it in the long run. It's high upfront cost, which is the only major downside economically. But yeah, as long as you're disposing of the waste properly, it doesn't have to be yeah. permanent either. I think I think I I think we should absolutely go for nuclear energy. I think it's a good idea. DJ has a QOTD. He says there have to be strict guidelines about running it, which there seem to be in place. If I'm being honest, at least in the West, no one's speaking on behalf of China or that one plant in South Africa. But I mean, they I'm sure they have their own things going on. Which I mean, there weren't any massive explosions in China that were listed. Unless, of course, they've, you know, covered that up. But I don't think they would be able to. <laughs> so, China seems to be doing okay as well. Um, DJ thinks it's too risky. So North he's against Korea. it. North Korea. North Korea, I don't even know if they have nuclear power plants. I don't think they've listed. They might have, but I, I'm not sure. Probably not, if I'm being honest. They have... I, I'm going to check my notes. Yep, yep. North Korea is a nuclear power. It does, okay. Livy says that... Um, it shouldn't be top priority, and we could try and maybe um, balance it out with other energy sources to have a more environmentally friendly ways of producing energy. To be honest, wind and solar are underutilized. Solar's kind of expensive, wind not as much, and they have all different kind of you know pros and cons. But the thing is, um, we can reduce the high upfront costs if instead of just going all nuclear power plants, we go with those other energy sources so Livy might have honestly hit the nail on the head for the optimal solution it's all about balance and like I'm not a, an accountant you'd have to crunch numbers yourself specifically with different governments with different companies but you know if if people collaborated on this kind of thing more, well, I mean you yeah. it could it could really just solve environmental problems ecological problems you know pollution issues as well as economic and energy issues I mean energy crises have come and gone over the years there was one back in the 70s it was pretty major um, and I feel like that we're kind of in another one now, not really, but it's ge it's getting worse, and it's only going to get worse if we don't do something about it. So nuclear energy, I think at the very least, should be considered as a major alternative. It's an alternative energy form. Would you agree or disagree, though? Um, I'm just waiting for chat messages. As an alternative energy? Asking you. Yeah, I just as an alternative to fossil fuel, I think we all agree that it's better. But like, how much should we prioritize it, Robbie? What do you think? Like overall, I think it should be the main power fuel. Honestly, you think it should be number one? We should just go. Yeah, I uh, think it should be the main power source we use. Yeah, I mean, I mean, France. That I think that was my mic. It fell over. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I think we should ask <laughs> France because but France yeah, I, I is the most reliant. Source on nuclear power how well has that gone for them you know that's that's uh well seems that's like what we be fine. asking i mean I'm, I'm gonna ask it i guess how well france i'll just type france energy <laughs> how well france energy sorry guys on my mic is sensitive i've had to turn it down it's how well france how energy enough. how well energy in france how well france energy Okay, so according to the international agency, this is Wikipedia, this isn't even a nuclear energy related article, this is just Wikipedia in general. According to the International Energy Agency, France has historically generated a very low level of carbon dioxide emissions compared to other G7 economies due to its reliance on nuclear energy. I think that basically sums it up. That's like the core argument. Nuclear energy as an alternative to fossil fuels, better for the economy, better for the environment. Um... The IEA is a Paris-based autonomous intergovernmental organization. Well, it is based in Paris. Okay, maybe a little biased, but it's it's a agency that covers a lot of countries. G7, if you guys know what this is, the group of seven. It's Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, UK, and US. So out of those countries, the leading Western economies, um, France has had the lowest emissions. There are other factors to consider, though. It's you know smaller than some of those countries. You can see statistics oh, here for gosh. yourself. Super Soul! Yeah. Livy pretty much yeah. summed up what I feel about the question. We're developing a lot of new technologies for more efficient nuclear power plants too. France really seems to be leading in this, which is interesting. Um, oh, 
But yeah, there's like loads of information here. 56 reactors in 19 nuclear sites. France has the largest nuclear fleet in the world compared to its population. France is like the most nuclear country <laughs> yeah, in terms of energy. Interesting. Kind of like your mom. Dude. Oh my god. I can't have a serious debate with you. I just can't. <laughs> Oh, it's always the your okay, mom okay. jokes. It's like definitive. It's a universal constant. If you're around Robbie Flonoff, there will be a your mom joke. It's making me cringe. Your dad. Oh my god. It's so. He's reached new levels of uh, unfunny. Jesus Christ. I don't believe it. Ah. But yeah, you can see how much of France's energy is nuclear. 371 out of 529. Terawatts? I don't know what that is. But yeah, um... We have more nukes than you. I'm coming for you, Matt. <laughs> oh, hell nah. Alright, I think we should talk about nukes. Because, uh, we've spent a long time on this. And I, I don't know, I don't think there's much yep. else to say. We've kind of looked at all the reasons, tried to weigh it up, tried to do some more deep research. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Super Soul, yep. you're absolutely right. France is leading when it comes to nuclear power. So... We've talked about nuclear energy, and I think we have a kind of consensus on this. I, I, Robbie and I, I think, are a little more enthusiastic about it than Livy and Super Soul. Yeah. But I think we generally agree that it yeah. is a good alternative to fossil fuels and absolutely a part of some kind of transition process to cleaner energy, at the very least. So, what about nuclear yeah. weapons? I'm not going to do as much research for this one because I don't really feel like I need to. And it wasn't really planned, but Robbie, you brought this up. Nuclear weapons. What do you think of nuclear weapons? Okay. Oh, super soft. I, I'm talking about nuclear weapons. I think we should only really use nuclear weapons if we feel that we absolutely need to. The main reason that the U.S. dropped the two atomic bombs on Japan in um, 1945 was just because I'm uh, we wanted a quick end to World War II because if the U.S. just continued with its, with its um, I would topic campaign, there could have been way more casualties and the war could have gone on for far long. Yeah. Oh yeah, we dropped the bombs for that reason. Let me hey, just you know what? I actually do agree with President Truman. Okay, he he was the guy who was like, yeah, we should um we should drop the bombs. So it did actually help end World War II. So. Yeah. I think we only really need two nuclear bombs if we like again if we need to. It is intended to be a kind of well, last resort, resort like... thing, right? It's a last resort weapon, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking. So I'm trying to find never check left. Here. I was kind of being here. Hmm. Like, remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? Yes. Like, that was the closest we had ever gone to a nuclear war. Dude, literally, when I was it, but... about yeah. your age, I was studying uh, for what we call GCSEs in my country, the Cold War. I I still remember this. Yes. Uh, I'm I'm fact checking. Okay, I just want to be clear, guys. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki did kill hundreds of thousands of people. I'm checking multiple sources now, and the casualty yeah, statistics are—they are high. So to argue that this reduced the number of total casualties, if we're just putting it down to numbers in World War II, maybe. I'm not so sure. I feel like I feel like less people would actually have been killed if nukes weren't used, but. The war could have raged on for who knows how much longer. So, I, I don't well, agree with that. Usual argument, but it did end it quicker. More casual, yeah. So, okay. Also, uh, Harry Truman, the president, I remember him. He was a yeah. fervent anti communist. He was the one who was at the. Was it Yalta? The last of the big three um, conferences during the end of World yeah, War II? I think so. I don't know if you've learned about these. That's yeah, um, kind of thing, though. He was like, he wasn't. Yeah, I, I have like a little bit on my own in my own time. But here's the thing: he wasn't supposed to be the president. He only became president because Franklin Roosevelt died in his fourth term from a cerebral hemorrhage. Oh yeah, that was it. Yeah, which was really unfortunate because uh, Roosevelt. I mean, from I'm yeah. not super familiar, but Roosevelt was one of the best U.S. presidents in history. I've heard. I mean. I guess yeah. getting your country through the war is going to get you remembered anyway, but my dad's a fan of him, and, um... I mean... He was a very no, good president. Yeah, it, it, it's really unfortunate, because 
the thing is, um, something that a lot of historians have noted is that um, Roosevelt was a really good mediating force. You know, there was a lot of tension between the Russians yeah. and the Brits. Um, you know, Churchill and then, uh, was it Clement Attlee? I don't remember who was after him. Um, and um, Stalin at the time. But Roosevelt kind of had this mediation. He kept, you know, the negotiations, you know, um, going well. Truman was a bit less... Uh, oh, yeah, by the way. Uh, yeah. I will say, um, from when Franklin Roosevelt won, he actually swapped to a new vice president because his old one decided to run against him in 1940. They picked oh, yeah, Henry Wallace, that. and yo, know, yeah, so, that. that guy was a pro-communist. He was a communist synthesizer. Oh, wow. Ish. But yeah, that's the, the same thing. Is, by 1944, like people were like, yeah, I don't know about this Wallace guy. Let's go with Truman instead. Yeah, Truman. Truman. Um, I don't know how good or bad Truman was as a president. He was probably all right, but he was um. He was a lot more antagonistic to Stalin because he was a lot more ideologically opposed to communism and he kind of increased tensions and, and created problems yeah. between the country's diplomacy. Um, uh, so, like, he didn't do as good a job as Roosevelt did with kind of, you know, keeping the peace. Uh, and a lot of the early Cold War, you know, yeah. tensions were, you know, down to some of his interactions with Stalin and kind of their respective governments. It's it's complicated. Yeah. There's a lot more to it. I'm, I'm summarizing here, but... But yeah, so nuclear weapons, guys, here's the thing. Yep. Nuclear weapons, on the one hand, you think, well, okay, they are the most devastating, horrid, absolutely overpowered weapon ever created. The ones used to end World War II are absolutely minuscule create compared to what we are capable of now. We can pretty much blow up Earth with the nukes we have now. And if a nuclear is ever launched, it will just wipe, you know, it will wipe out continents. Like, we have that power now. It's insane. And there are dozens of countries which have nuclear weapons all across the world, in the west, in the east, whatever. Um, uh, however, as we saw demonstrated in the Cold War, and particularly at its highest flashpoint, the Cuban Missile Crisis, you'd have to be really stupid to fire a nuke, because mm -hmm. there is no defense against a nuke. Something else I was studying at the same time yeah. was um, warfare through time, 1250 to the present day. And tactics and technology are two things that kind of advance, you know, one step after the other to kind of beat one another. You know, the invention of the gun, you know, led to new, uh, you know, tactics and new technology um, because swords weren't, you know, effective against it anymore. Um, you know, the tanks, you know, trench warfare, you know, gases, there's all kinds yeah. of things that have evolved. And the newest technological development in warfare was the nuclear weapon in the 40s. And nuclear weapons, you know, have, you know, improved in how efficient they are and whatnot since then. But there has not been any development in warfare technology or tactics since the nuke. Because there is no defense from a nuke. You can't... Yeah. There's no way of, of blocking it unless you're pretty much, I don't know, hide in your underground bunker if you're rich enough to afford something that could survive a nuke. And even then, you know, it's going to be like, you know, fallout after that. So you're, you're basically dooming yourself to a post-apocalyptic wasteland. But... The, th the thing, what this means though, is that the it brought about a thing called mutually assured destruction theory, or MAD theory. If you guys have heard of this, the idea is basically that no yeah. one's ever going to fire a nuke, because if they did, then the other their their opponent is also going to fire a nuke and destroy both countries and kind of well, you'll go down with me kind of thing. Because at that point, you're already doomed, so it doesn't matter what you do you know from your perspective you're just a selfish self-interested government like that as you know you probably are you don't care about what your enemy is doing um and yeah that would just destroy humanity it would wipe out millions billions even of, of people with the the power of the news now so it's kind of why the war is cold it's just kind of a game of, that gets all over population but <laughs> okay <God. sighs> okay yeah but, yeah, but for that reason, <laughs> even though we've come close a few times, nukes have never been fired. The question is, could we ever have a situation where someone would actually be ballsy enough to fire a nuke? Because countries with nukes have more power because they have the defense of, well, we also have nukes, so we can do the same to you. Um, could a defense against nuclear weapons yeah. ever be developed? You know, so, like with every way of, you know, deflecting them or, 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 or dif disabling them or something um, because on the one hand nuclear weapons well the Union of Concerned Scientists um, 
actually, I was looking at this off camera because it got the nuclear weapons got mentioned off camera. Because I remembered one of my charities had a specific thing about this. Yeah. They are anti nuclear weapons. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to swap today's charity shout out to the uh, UCS Amnesty. You can find Amnesty uh, uh, on another stream. I'll, I'll put them in next time. But nucle nuclear weapons. They're the most dangerous invention the world has ever seen. Can we prevent them from being used again? This organization, uh, you can see the kind of things that they deal with. Climate change, energy, transportation, food. They're trying to, you know, they're based in the US and they're, you know, using science to try and, you know, make positive change to the world. That kind of thing. Um, and one of the things that they're facing is nukes. They are very much against nuclear weapons. Um, you know, because tens of thousands of people were, you know, killed in just a flash. And, um... They, they, they're, they're for, what, like, demilitarization, I think? Um, and, like, a lot of the Cold War's most absurd and dangerous nuclear policies remain unchanged. In the US, a president can order the launch of nuclear weapons without any consultation, for example. Apparently, which is nuts. And the arms race uh, increases the risk of nuclear war. And th there's a lot of different arguments about this. This doesn't really go in depth. Um, so maybe not the best example, but... I mean, what do you guys think of this? Because the way I see it, I think it might be a necessary evil. Because if you think about it this way, conventional war still happens. It's still around, unfortunately. But it tends to happen in countries that don't have nukes. If every single country had nuclear weapons, could we end all wars? Or would, do you think someone could fire off a nuke? Because the end of the day, no. I, I don't know if anyone's that stupid. Because even if you're the most like, narrow-minded, self-interested, bigot, North you know, Korea. dictator, you wouldn't fire a nuke, because then you yourself would be nuked by your opponent. I mean, I don't know, like... Don't try I, to be bossy enough to do ask North Korea, but they'd lose an invasion immediately nowadays. Yeah. I, I, I know, like, you know, war bad, weapons bad, people being killed is bad. Agreed. Yeah, sure. But, you know for the greater good maybe there's a cost and maybe mutually assured destruction i mean so far it's been 70 80 years a mutually assured destruction theory has held up it has worked um every time that we've come close to nuclear war which has only been a couple times anyway yeah. um negotiations have succeeded and there's been some kind of compromise some kind of economic trade-off something to just prevent actual world war three nuclear fallout um Super Soul, you make a fair point, yeah. Let's not moralize, but, like, oh, This kind of does connect to moral philosophy. Like, you know, should we... I wouldn't advocate for nuclear weapons, right? Because the way I see it, one nuke is enough. It do Like, we're at the point now where the scale of destruction makes no difference. Like, you will obliterate entire nations with the nukes you have. One is enough. I mean, I guess if you're trying to aim for different parts of the world, maybe five, ten... But the US has 5,000 nukes. Exactly. At that, that point, it makes no difference. It's like the more nukes you add, the less it is of the total amount. So it's kind of the more nukes you have, the less the nuke is, you know, the less um, it's a small proportion of what you're adding. Like the 5,000 and first nuke is only one in 5,000 nukes, whereas the second nuke is half of your arsenal. So it's like, I don't think we should advocate for more and more and more nuclear weapons because it's just unnecessary. And also, uh, kind of, you know, uh, that's actually yeah, encouraging, that, that you know. Also, um, Russia is like 6,000, I militarism. think. That's too many. Yeah, again, it's the US and Russia. Like, they are the, the biggest ones. However, if we were actually to maybe advocate so that every country had at least one nuke, I'm not so sure that would actually be a bad thing. Although, I mean, North Korea, there are some countries which... Maybe we shouldn't trust them with it, but like who are we to judge, you know? Um, you could, I could go on about well, they're anti-democracy and they're this, that and the other, but I could say that about a lot of countries that do have nukes. Um, you know? But um, <laughs> it, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a... Common in the chat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> Fallout 2 is better than sex. That's the only reason he supports <laughs> nuclear weapons. Yeah, we should fire them just so we get nuclear... Full... You should get into Fallout in real life, guys. Fallout 2 in real life. But yeah, this one's a bit of a moral dilemma. Like, at the end of the day, nuclear energy I'm all for, and I think, you know, there's risks which we can, you know, 
face the challenge of and appropriately if we work together because it's had been done before but nuclear weapons is a bit more awkward because i'm i'm very much you know i've always been I, I'm kind of, you know, against weaponization, against militarization. It's what Doctor Who taught me, like, growing up. I've always thought, you know, like, Einstein, it was very tragic that a lot of Einstein's greatest discoveries, like E equals MC squared, actually led to the creation of the nuke, and he was always very anti-war. He had a very strong, like, anti-war pro-democracy message that he would spread whenever he traveled around the world, showing off his inventions. Um, and this is another thing that the Union of Concerned Scientists uh, actually has democracy is like one of their um science and democracy is one of their like um you know pages about the things that they like, want to protect in addition to just protecting the environment they want to see you know society you know and the economy run you know fairly but yeah i don't know man it, nuclear weapons it's <sighs> the fbi's gonna come crashing through matt's window yeah, I don't know. I don't think we should encourage nuclear weapons, but I don't think we should discourage it either. It's kind of strange. Like, that you know, they're they're a good preventative measure from I feel war, like if as we've seen, but they are also responsible for killing just ridiculous numbers of innocent people. We shouldn't fire them. That's what I'm thinking. Pretty much, like again, two hundred fourteen thousand in um. Uh... Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. That's yeah. a lot of people from just is... two towns. Yeah. Like, that's not something you can just ignore. And, yeah, and the, it's not like they were soldiers or anything. Those, those were civilians. Those were innocent people. Um, because a, a nuke it doesn't discriminate. It will kill your own soldiers in there. It will kill prisoners, hostages. It will kill everyone. So... It kills everybody equally. At the end of the day, I guess it's uh, nuclear weapons is a bit more difficult because there are definitely some pros to it, but you can't deny it's a weapon of mass destruction. It's a horrible thing. The the idea for me personally, I would encourage everyone to get a nuke so that they don't have to use it. And I know how weird and counterintuitive that sounds, but if your objective is world peace, it actually makes a lot of sense. I guess it, 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 if someone could actually prove that mutually assured destruction theory doesn't work i feel like really they'd just be proving their own stupidity though because it's no one who isn't rational wouldn't adhere to it right i mean it's worked so far it's not a guarantee that'll work in future but the only thing that would really change this i guess is if there was some kind of counter to nuclear weapons invented in future that would be the game changer because then whoever has that could fire nukes without getting uh, also nuked which would be really really That'd be a strong position, but I don't know. It's basically just like, hey, we're going to invade you. What are you going to do about it? We have several nuclear bombs, so we can take out your capital in one go. Exactly. On second this thought, I'll just leave. This is why, like, Middle Eastern countries and, like, uh, a certain other, you know, autocracies won't actually physically invade the United States or, you know, um, China or whatever, like... You know, they, they they literally don't have the means. Conventional warfare is, is over. Like, it only really happens in poorer countries that don't have nukes. Um, or, like, proxy wars, which was a big thing in the Cold War. There's... Yeah. yeah. Exactly! How the hell would you counter a nuke? I, I don't know. It, yeah. I guess... When I mentioned Doctor Who, it's because... There's this one episode from the 70s... Where they did basically have this city built with a it massive dome... With, like, meters thick, like, steel and concrete... And the idea is that it would be able to survive a nuclear explosion. But that was on like a war-torn planet where there had already been a thousand years of warfare that had turned it into like a barren radioactive wasteland. So, I don't know. That was a, just a sci-fi story. I don't know if concrete could stop a nuke. Send Iron Man into a black hole with said nuke. I guess there is that. Avengers, Avengers Assemble did actually show us how we could stop a nuke. He literally took a nuke that was being fired at New York and just put it through a wormhole. Portal, sorry. Yeah. You gotta hit a perfect counter. Our, Chekhov's our species are just like, oh hey, this is a very good day. Why the hell is there a portal? Oh god, there's a bomb. All right. So Robbie, you don't have any more deep, thought-out debate points to counter with. Uh, no counter arguments. Nope. No nothing. <sighs> well, no, I mean, not really. The thing I really like... say is that if the country just randomly uses a nuke, then like the UN would just have to intervene militarily. But like otherwise. Yeah, I don't really 
I don't really think we should use nukes that often, like at or at all, really. That's all I really have to say, really. I'm gonna change the title of the stream to "Should We Prioritize Nuclear Energy?" I feel like there wasn't much debate today. This was more of a research and discussion and not much. where we just found out for ourselves. Because like, we all generally agree there weren't a lot of crazy counter arguments, but you know, maybe that's what this is. Maybe rather than a debate, this is a starting point for people to go on to debate about these things. Um, next time I think I'm actually gonna get a bunch of people in here and see if we can get more back and forth, you know, agree, disagree. Oh, you need to stop a nuke is a very large tennis racket. So you guys are just having a joke about it, but like, I'm serious here. Like, this is a, it's a pretty, pretty serious topic. I don't know. I just use I, I your hand. Maybe. All right. You know what? I'm gonna end the stream. Oh, yeah, there's no stopping a nuke. Cause I, I, I need to move right, on and perfect. do my next stream in 15 minutes lunch. anyway, guys. I am gonna be playing some Portal Reloaded. Finally, right. this is something that I have been meaning to do for like a year, and I'll talk about it more when I'm over there. Ooh, even Lucy seems to be joining us for this one um and i'll talk more about that when i'm on there but right now i think i'm just gonna end the stream so thank you so much for watching yeah. this was really I interesting thing to too, dive into so. yeah um oh yeah you, you know because nuclear energy and nuclear weapons you know it was just i kind of i wanted to start with an actual debate topic this year and i saw that was first on my list but i think i might start taking ones from the debate society that i go to and see if i could come up with something uh, come with some more interesting uh, niche things because we had some very interesting discussions yeah. in the debate society at my uni um, and again you're all welcome to join but uh, yeah I'm gonna go so like share subscribe check out uh, I guess yeah, I'm you know gonna I'm gonna link well. Amnesty and um, Union of Concerned Scientists because they kind of both ended up being relevant today I'm gonna link them both why not it's a very strange one-time double charity shout outs the QRTD winner, I'm going to give to Livy because I thought um, I thought she gave the um, most thought-out answer. I thought it was really interesting. You guys should go Indeed. check out her channel. Uh, she's tagged in the description. She does some great content. And, uh, yeah, the articles are all there. And, uh, Robbie, you know what? Um, I'll let you do the outro, like on the end screen, like we sometimes do. All right? Okay, perfect. You can end the stream. So, thanks for watching, guys. Okay, perfect. Stay hydrated. All right, I'll end the stream then. Okay, so uh, everybody, I I I just like to um uh, say something to you all. It's something like really important. I don't think you guys actually knew this before, but uh, you see the, the thing I haven't really told you guys that well. It, it, I'm not sure you guys can even comprehend it though. <laughs> yeah, you're all nerds. <laughs> <laughs>